On praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sent peace and blessings upon his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, in your life, you will have some great days. There's a handful of them. For instance, the day you were born is a very significant day. The day you get married is a very significant day. The day you do Umrah, the day you stand on Arafat. There's many significant days in your life. And of course, the day we die is another significant day. But of all the days, there is no doubt whatsoever that the greatest day in the history of the world, in the history of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be the day of judgment. This is the most this is the greatest, the most profound Allah Akbar. This is one of the greatest creations of Allah is that day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He speaks of a day that is 50,000 years long. And one day with Allah is not like our day. It's not like our normal 24 hours, the sun rose and the sun set. And, no. One day with Allah is equivalent to a thousand years of our time. It's a very serious day. And every prophet that came warned of this day. It's the job of every prophet to warn of this day. That this, that this day is coming, make no mistake. There is coming a day where every creation will stand before Allah and every creation will be held accountable for their deeds and what they, and, 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 and some of them will be rewarded and some of them will be the opposite. And there's no doubt that it's a terrifying day, except for the ones whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses. It's a, it's a terrifying day, make no mistake. Anbiya, my brothers, prophets of Allah, will be petrified on that day. Not worried. There's a difference between when you're worried, you know, like, there's times you're worried, but you're thinking, you know, I might get away. No, no, they are genuinely scared, petrified. And we know in the famous story, in the famous hadith, when all of humanity will run to the Prophet Adam and they will ask him, intercede, you are our father. And he will say, get away from me, nafsi, nafsi. And that's not genuine, that's very genuine. He's so worried, he's worried about himself. And every other Prophet, with the exception of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every Prophet will be worried about himself and whatever shortcomings he thinks he felt he had with our word. And the rest of it. One of the greatest days. And we too should also be worried about that day, my brothers. I promise you towards the end, I'll be uplifting this conversation. So no worries, this isn't doom and gloom. But by no means should we underestimate this day. And wallah, my brothers, if you feel content in your heart that, look, I'm going to be all right on that day. Make no mistake, this is not some level of understanding you've reached. It's nothing but shaitan that's making you feel that you're going to be okay on that day. How do we know this? Well, if prophets were worried and scared, what's that left for us? If companions that were promised paradise, yani while they were walking on earth, there was a handful of companions that were promised paradise, yet they were worried and scared. Trust me, we don't understand that one or two hadith that you're probably banking on more than what Abu Bakr and Umar bin Khattab and If they were worried and they were scared, then we should also be worried and scared. That day, my brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةً any person who did an atom's weight of good, an atom's weight, make no mistake, it is not lost. From the day you were born until the day you die, there are two angels that are writing everything you did. Sometimes you will like forget. I always get brothers, classic for me. Some uncle brother, do you remember me? No, I'm not really sure. But tell me, do you remember me? You're like, yeah, bro, I bumped into you. I met you at this gathering, I met you. And he gets upset when you don't remember him too, huh? No, no, no. Allah Jalla Jalalu, not that Allah Azza wa Jal, Hasha Billah. It's not that Allah forgets. Allah, from the day you were born until the day you die, there are two angels that are writing every single thing you did. 
Why? So that on the day of judgment, Allah Jalla Jalal will know we're going to try and argue. We're going to try and lie. We're going to try and get ourselves out of situations. Allah will present these angels. They were there, they wrote. So you can't pull off the move of your Allah. This isn't right. They were there. There's a narration, I'm not sure of the authenticity, but it definitely paints the picture that a man whistled. That was significant. He whistled. So the angels, the one that writes the good deeds and the angels that write the bad deeds, none of them knew like, who records it. And right at the end, so they asked, they inquired, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded, both of you write it down and I will question him on why he did it when he stands in front of me. A whistle. And he blew some air from his lips. <laughs> Nothing, my brothers, not an inch will escape Allah on that day. Make no mistake. I always give that hadith. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi says that you stand in front of Allah, barefooted, and, uh, naked, barefooted, uncircumcised. This hadith is very, it's very, very profound. Because if I told you, brother, I saw someone naked, what do you understand? You don't need me to add any more details. I saw someone naked. No, he sallallahu alayhi wa emphasizes and then further emphasizes you get, that you'll be naked, barefooted, Uncircumcised. Why the uncircumcised part? I don't know the tafsir of the hadith, but my personal understanding, this is the conclusion I've come to, that something as insignificant as your foreskin that was removed when you were pure, when you were a baby. Even this Allah will restore because not an inch of you will escape Allah in that day. Make no mistake. None of us will be escaping anything, my brothers. Actually, when the Prophet ﷺ was saying this to Aisha anha, he's telling her that on that day we'll be naked and look how pure, look how innocent. So Aisha, our mother, anha, she says to him, O Prophet of Allah, are you telling me? And this adds to that, my brother, if you feel confident on that day, if you feel like, look, don't worry, I'm going to be all right. This isn't a level of Iman. Nothing but shaitan. Giving you this false sense of security. Making you cling on to something that you've probably, either you've misunderstood or you're interpreting it in a way that's making you... Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, anyone who feels safe, from the plan of Allah, surely he's from the losers. Anyone who feels safe, he's from the losers. A believer is always worried. Not worried when you're broken. You give up a life worry. No, but it's that worry that's always driving you. You're following one good deed with another good deed because you're genuinely worried and I don't know and inshallah it's accepted and I want, right? So you're always trying to up yourself, that worry. Not worried where you're broken and you just fall into a sense of depression and you don't do anything. No, this, this is a very serious day. And look, Allah, my brothers, the day of judgment is genuine. Mahadan lahadan. No one is for no one on that day. Make no mistake. Allah says, Yawma yafiru al-mar'u min akhid. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paints a very, very explicit picture. He says, on that day, no mother, no father, no brother, no husband, no wife, no child, no friend. Nothing, no one for no one on that day. Everyone's worried about himself. My brothers, why do we mention this? We have a short life. Very short. Most of you, whether you like to see it or you don't, most of us, we're actually now, especially in the new modern world that we live in, most of us live in denial. 
Most of you have gone past the halfway mark already. And we've been promised nothing. No one knows when he's going to die. No one. No one knows. I can, I, I'm sure most people, we can put up their hands. Someone's lost a friend. Either he was shot, or he died of cancer, or he died of an unforeseen heart attack, or he had a 20 and 80. You know. We have a very short life, much shorter than what you think. And we've been placed on this earth, my brothers, to do all that we can for that day. So what have you done? There's a call of the scholars, I think it's from the ulama, Allahu alam, but I heard it from Ulam Mashaykh recently and I thought, wow. He was speaking, I think he was standing on top of a grave and there was the coffin there and he goes, this is, this is Sanduq al-Amal. You only have like a... And like a little money box or a treasure box or something like that. This is, this is Sanduq al amal This coffin, this is the box that all of your deeds that you did while you were alive there in there. You had your Umrah, your Quran, your, 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 your dhikr, your, whatever, whatever you presented for Allah, it's in that box. It's gone with you. So, what did you put in there? And how much of it did you put in? Now, I'm going to try and tread on a fine line because I don't want to fall into the fitna of making you all believe that it's all about how much of it you've done because there is grounds for that indeed. The more you do, obviously, the better. But equally, how did you do those things as well? How conscious were you when you did it? How sincere were you when you did it? And it's a balancing trick. For a believer, it's a balancing trick. It's a balancing trick of being aware, conscious, taqwa, you're aware of what you're doing, you're having khushu' for instance, you're having khushu' in your salawat or, or, or things of this nature. But there's also the balancing act of doing more. The more you do, the more you find. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I had a money box. But no one told me you had to put money in it. <laughs> I thought just having the money box, and keeping it for a long period of time that somehow it was going to breed eggs in there or something. Well, when I opened it, I was very disappointed. That's foolish now when you look back and you laugh. But actually, many of us do the exact same thing. That I thought as a child that the longer I had the money box, that somehow something was going in there. Although I wasn't contributing. And then you thought, yeah, well, you know, man, I've had this money box for five years. But they have it for a hundred. If you're putting nothing in it, it's doing nothing for you. And then some can have a money box for a couple of days. <clears throat> for those brothers that came with us recently to Umrah, we spoke about a companion by the name of Sa'ad bin Mu'ad. If anyone remembers. Anyone remember from the Umrah tree? Sa'ad bin Mu'ad was one of the Ansar. He was one of the companions from the Ansar. Hands down the greatest Ansari companion, by far. The greatest. From the day Sa'ad bin Mu'ad accepted Islam to the day that Sa'ad bin Mu'ad died, he was Muslim for seven years. How long was he Muslim for? Seven years. From the day he accepted his Islam to the day that he died, seven years. Yet in the authentic hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, when Sa'ad bin Mu'ad died, he says, اِهْتَزَّ لِمَوْتِهِ عَرْشَ الرَّحْمَنِ He says, the throne of Allah Jalla Jalalu shook when Sa'ad bin Mu'ad died. Muslim for seven years. And some will be Muslim all their lives. And they will die, never mind the throne of Allah, the leaf on a tree won't even move for you. So it's not about time. It's about what you do in your time. How much do you do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the Quran when he speaks about a Jannah, he speaks about Jannah and then he says, 
So let, so then he says, Jalla Jalalu. So let those who love to compete, let them compete for this. You want to race? You want to compete? And competing is a natural instinct in the human being. Naturally. Remember when kids, actually they don't have to be kids, even now as grown-ups. You know sometimes you'll be just walking with mates, and one guy decides to run. Last one up the stairs is the loser. It's something all as foolish and as insignificant as... You find yourself naturally what? You want to run. What? Because, <laughs> because he decided that the last one up the stairs is a loser and you don't want to be a loser. So you run. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he speaks about this Jannah, he says, Select those who love to compete. How oh, we all love to compete? Actually, just on the weekend, where uh, Tills, you weren't there, man. I was at a rotary show. <laughs> so we went to this car show, yeah? And well, you just feel the buzz in the air, this competition. Although no one's actually talking about it, but you, you know what to do. My car's faster, my car's this, my car's that. How much did you run down the quarter mile? How much am I going to Anyway, so my brothers, it's about what did you do in your life? How much of it did you do? Because on the day of judgment, Wallah, my brothers, you will see everything. And if you think, no, brother, not me, I'm not going to remember. Like I said to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has these angels, they're writing down everything you did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever does good, in, whoever does an atom's weight of good, will see. And the opposite is true. Whoever does an atom's weight of bad, on the day of judgment, what? <coughs> he will also see. And this muraja now, you questioning yourself, what have you done and what have you presented before Allah? And you need to ask. Because if you're not asking, let me tell you something, no one's asking on your behalf. Well, I'm 38 now, 38, 39, whatever. No one's ever told me, brother, what have you done for your akhirah? How much have you done? Let's sit down. But I've been asked how much have you earned because you need to do your taxes. I've been asked that. <laughs> but I've never, like, no one's ever sat me down and said to me, you know, look, let's come, let's actually assess what have you done in your life? What have you put forward? Nothing. Does anyone know, brother Adam Abdul Qadir? Anyone, anyone you know? He's a local here, I'm sure you'll see him here. Adam, uh, Adam's father, Adam Abdul Qadir's father, he died of cancer. May Allah have mercy on him and, and all of the believers. He died some years back. And he got cancer, he got really sick. And we once did, uh, I did a bit of a thing with him at the masjid. And that was very new for us, like a man who had cancer and was openly willing to talk about it. It was a big thing, it was a big event and lots of brothers came to the masjid. Allah will never forget what he said to me that day. I said to him, Hajj, from the day you found out you had cancer, what's one of the first things you did? He said, I remembered every person I harmed. He said, and I wrote them down on a list. And I think he spent like one year traveling three different countries, asking every one of those, asking every person on that list for forgiveness. I said to him, how far back did you go? He said, when I was nine, I harmed the boy. He said, well, I took a boy's bike. And he was in his... I think it was in his late 50s when he died, or early 60s. I said, you remembered when you were nine? I said, well, how did you remember that? This is the comment that I'll never forget. He said to me, when death is in front of you, trust me, you will remember everything. You will remember everything. He remembered every person he ever harmed. Every person he ever spoke ill of, he, he remembered them. 
He went to Palestine and he went to, I don't know, which other country. And, and he had something like 50, wallah, I can't remember, maybe 65 names on the list. I don't know, like it was a figure. He said to me, I got everyone except for three people. One of them had died, two of them were in a country that no one knew. But he remembered. Where am I going with this? Brothers, do not let your life go by without you putting into your sanduk al-amal, into your box of deeds. Because I'm telling you, no one's watching it for you. That's your job. How will you stand in front of Allah, my brothers? What have you done? What will you present forward? No doubt, no one will enter paradise through their deeds. No one. We know that. <coughs> but it is your deeds that will earn Allah's mercy. That's the currency for Allah's mercy. It's your deeds. It's your amal. What did you do? What did you do? Allah, my brothers, this whole talk was to talk to you about fasting. We just fasted the month of Ramadan. What do you do after Ramadan? You know, for many of us, Ramadan feels like it was ages ago. Actually, it was only a week. A week. Do not allow yourself to make fasting only for Ramadan. Fasting, my brothers, is one of the greatest deeds that you will stand in front of Allah with. The Prophet, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah Jalla Jalalu says, fasting is for me. And I will record and I will reward it accordingly on the day of judgment. Fasting is one of the acts of worship that you can do, my brothers. It's small. But huge in front of Allah Jalla Jalalu. Huge for you. Don't fall into the trap of fasting belongs to Ramadan. It doesn't. Fasting is the quality of the companions, the Prophet وسلم, the Prophets before him, and it is a quality of any man or woman that has a relationship with Allah. Allah loves fasting, my brothers. Loves it. Allah loves, Allah loves the bad smell of the fasting person's mouth. Allah loves it. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that that bad smell that comes from a fasting man's mouth, the fasting woman's mouth, is more beloved to Allah than musk. The most pleasant of smell. It's more beloved to Allah. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that Allah Jalla Jalalu says, He says, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, to the fasting person, He says, for the fasting person, there are two rewards. One when he breaks his fast, the other is when he stands in front of me and I reward him for the day that he fasted. We have short lives, my brothers. We don't have long lives. Most of us woke up to deen now. Most of us, we've woken up to deen now. So he might tell me, brother, I'm 30, I'm 40 years of age. 25, brother, I just woke up to deen now, brother, I'm just learning how to pray. How am I going to catch up? How can I make up? It's from Allah's rahmah that Allah has given us special days. Remember in the beginning I said that there are special days in your life. And this is from Allah's mercy, my brothers. One day, there is one day in the month of Ramadan that is greater than 83 years of worship. <clears throat> These are the great days of your life. I said birthday and that just to get you guys started, but these are the great days. Wallah, all of tonight's lecture was to give you this one hadith of the Prophet now. The Prophet, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anyone who fasts the month of Ramadan, 
and follows up the month of Ramadan by fasting six days from the month of Shawwal. Allah will reward it as if he fasted one entire year. These six days, like the day of Laylatul Qadr, like the day, for instance, fasting the day of Ashura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives for one whole year. There are a handful of these days. These days, my brothers, on the day of judgment, they're going to be mountains. One of the names of the day of judgment is the day of regret. One of the names of the day of judgment is the day of what? Regret. In dunya, we will, yeah, we will, look, if you, if you notice, most of our mates, who do we choose as friends? People that are either on my level or just, or just below me. Why? So then, that way I always feel like I'm a wali of Allah when I'm around them. So whenever I feel bad about my deen, who do I look at? The guys around me, brother, half of them don't even pray, I'm alright. <laughs> You know, on that day, my brothers, it's not going to look like that. On that day, it's not going to work like that. On that day, يَوْمَ يَفِرُ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ No mother, no father, no friend, no, no one. Every person will stand before Allah and every person will have their deeds and every person will stand and remember how many Ramadans either he didn't fast or he fasted them and he didn't follow them up with the six days of Shawwal. Now really in dunya, I can tell you from a foot perspective and the ulama, it's not far, it's not compulsory, you don't have to do it, don't worry about it brother, it's no big deal, it's only sunnah. Very valid conversation, very valid. You will not fall in sin if you don't fast them, absolutely. In dunya you have that conversation. But on the day of judgment, you won't even need a scholar to tell you. You yourself would say upon yourself, those days were more than compulsory. Why? Why? Because on a day when the prophets are scared and the prophets are worried, I could have fasted six days, six days of shawwal, and we're very fortunate. Bro, now we're in winter. Five o'clock, you're breaking your fast. I could have fasted six days of shawwal. Allah would have rewarded me with one year. No, I didn't do it. Why didn't you do it? Whatever excuse you have now, that same excuse, use it on the day of judgment. Not use it before Allah. Just say the excuse to yourself and watch it. You yourself won't accept it. Please, my brothers, Wallah, I beg you, don't let these six days go. Because on the day of judgment, you will beat yourself silly. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anyone who fasts one day nafil, one day, anyone who, this is an authentic hadith, anyone who fasts one day, no reason, I just, I woke up and I felt like I wanted to fast. Anyone who fasts one day for the sake of Allah, Allah will remove his face from Jahannam at distance of 70 years. Now I'm asking you, how many days of my life that have passed me by where I could have easily fasted and I didn't fast? Am I going to be regretting on the day of regret? Wallah, my brothers, on a day where people are begging each other for one good deed, one, just give me one. Give me one good deed. Mahada, lahada, no one wants a bar of no one. So yes, my brothers, Wallah, it's amazing that we do things together, we do things in congregation, but don't ever forget about yourself ever. You know, I always say to the brothers, Alhamdulillah, I frequently fly. And I'm always fascinated by the, um, you know the video that they play before you fly? You know the, the safety video? 
You guys haven't paid attention to it? Well, that's amazing, man. No, mate, like, I find it very interesting. They stress about buckling the seatbelt. I'm thinking, brother, when that plane comes down here, what's the seatbelt? It's not even a three point belt, huh? It's just like that little. Brother, when that plane's coming down, what's that seatbelt doing for you? Anyway, so I start critiquing everything, you know, I start. But I've always noticed on those videos or the or the actual presentation, they always say, in case of an emergency, when the oxygen in the cabin how do they say it? When the oxygen in the cabin does what? Oxygen masks drop. Yeah, yeah, but what is it that makes it drop? No, anyway. <laughs> they say when the when the when the oxygen reduced or whatever, I'm thinking, sure there's no oxygen in the cabin. And it's almost like that, they're comforting you. Oh, don't worry, oxygen masks will fall from it. Sure, oxygen masks are gonna fall. And then they always say, put your one on first. Before you help and you assist others. Never, wallah, my brother. Many of us, we love the idea, I want, I want to help my family, I want to help the world, I want to help the ummah, I want to help my kids, I want to... You're saving no one if they're drowning, if you yourself can't swim. Don't forget about yourself. These six days of shawal, my brothers, yeah, on face value, they're optional. On face value, they're sunan. You're not going to be punished if you don't do them. But as you develop, as you get closer to Allah, or as you get closer to death, you will have a very different understanding of these days. So the six days of shawal are now upon us, my brothers. One week of shawal has already passed. Three weeks left. Do not let the month finish without you fasting. Because I'm telling you on the day of judgment, you will know their weight. One year fasting. One day fasting removes your face from Jahannam a distance of 70 years. Fasting was a continuous sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu Aisha narrates that the Prophet ﷺ, he would fast Mondays and Thursdays. Sunnah. So if you just finished Ramadan and you're thinking, you know what, bro, fasting was good, fasting was keep, keep that sunnah alive. You can't do Mondays and Thursdays, fast on Thursdays. Why? The Prophet, he says, وسلم, in the other hadith, authentic hadith, he said about Monday, he said, he said, I was born on a Monday and I received revelation on a Monday. So I love to fast Monday. And then in the other hadith, he says, وسلم, he says, the deeds of the son of Adam, our deeds, our weekly deeds are presented before Allah on Mondays and Thursdays. He said, so I wanted my deeds to be presented before Allah on a day on which I was fasting. Keep this sunnah, keep this fasting alive. Wallah, my brothers, you will regret on the day of judgment. <clears throat> Minimum, fast those days. Keep that alive. There is a door in paradise. It's a special door only for those who used to, who, who were known for their fasting, they will enter through this bed. Bab al-Rayyan. Door of fasting. Has a special name. So please, my brothers, don't allow Ramadan that, you know, the month of Ramadan is finished. That's it, it's over. I think about fasting next year. No, my brother. Keep this... Keep this beautiful act, this beautiful act of worship that Allah loves. Allah loves. 
keep it alive. So these six days of Shawal, they are now. Fast them however you like. You can fast at one day on, one day off. You can fast them two days on, two days off. You can fast at one day, three days off, whatever. Whatever configuration you like. As long as you fast the six days in the month of Shawal. Are we already in Shawal? To fast the six days of Shawal? And yes, I confess that <laughs> they're very hard on the nafs, bro. Alhamdulillah, I finished my fourth day today. But I feel like I've climbed Everest. Wallah, the month of Ramadan was very easy. Six days of Shawal, oh. Daggers. They're daggers, they're absolute daggers. But the companions used to say, we found the most benefit in doing the things that we struggled with the most. We found great benefit, great rewards in doing the things that we struggled in. Look, my brothers, take this as a qaida, take this as a, as a principle. Allah loves to be worshipped when no one else is worshipping Him. Allah loves to be worshipped when what? No one else is worshipping Him. Of all of the sunan prayers, which is the most beloved to Allah? Is the tahajjud, the qiyam. Why? Show in the last third of the night, bro. That's when your, oh, your heart is sleeping. <laughs> your soul is sleeping. The last third of the night. That's the juiciest time to sleep. Allah loves when He's worshipped them. Why? Because generally speaking, very few are worshipping Allah. Then. Very few. The month of Ramadan, most Muslims fasted. Alhamdulillah, most Muslims fasted. Wallah, even those brothers who don't pray, they still fast the month of Ramadan. Multiple stories, and we all hear it. I know of one brother, he stopped selling drugs 40 days before Ramadan. Yeah, we can laugh about it. Wallah, we can actually laugh about it. But this is Iman, like Alhamdulillah, he still has that Iman in his heart. And he counts, he counts 40. I want to ask him whether do you use moon signing or calculation to count the 40. <laughs> <laughs> but Wallah, all jokes aside, genuinely, he stops selling drugs, or as he calls it, Bizo. He doesn't do Bizo 40 days before Ramadan. Does his Ramadan. Yeah, does his Ramadan. And then has one crack at him, bro. <laughs> but. Look, but look, Wallahi, there's always two, two ways you can look at it. I see this as that that's a sign that there's still faith in his heart and there's still Iman in his heart. Because really, why is he stopping 40 days before? He, he still has that faith in his heart. He has some sort of conscience. He feels guilty. He, and he really wants a lot. The reason why I mention this is, Alhamdulillah, most people fast Ramadan. But very few fast Shawwal. And if you want to reach levels with Allah, my brothers, always look for the things where that are not commercially, I mean, they're not openly or they're not. Always look for these things. I always say to the brothers, you know, you know, like, have you ever watched a marathon? You know, when they start the marathon and they, they shoot that cap, thousands take off. You can't see faces, bro, it's just people running. That same marathon, who when they took off, thousands or hundreds, whatever it is, when you go to the finish line, who's there? He usually it's some Ethiopian brother, you know. <laughs> Between him and number two, there's like seven minutes, you know. <laughs> Smashes it. So don't look at the beginning of the race. Always look at the end of it. So please, my brothers, make the most of these days. Six days of Shawwal, three weeks of Shawwal left, fast them however you like. My advice is, this is just my nasiha, like I said, pray, fast them however you want. But my advice is, crack them six right after each other. It's like a band-aid, bro, just rip it straight off and you'll be right. 
Faster, right? Uh, of course, of course, you only know, like if you've got issues, you've got situations, you can't do them like that, but however you want. And you can also join your intentions with them. Not, you know, if you've missed days of fasting, you can't join intentions with that. But for instance, let's say on Thursday, you can fast Thursday for the reward of the Sunnah of fasting Thursdays and one of the days of Shawwal. Monday, you can do the same thing as well. The three white days of the month of Shawwal, usually the 15th, uh, 13th, 14th, and the 15th, right? Sunnah of fast these days. You can fast them and make them also from the month of Shawwal, yeah, from the six days of your Shawwal. Fast them however you want. But please, my brothers, do not let this month go by. Don't be the, every year this happens to me. Don't be the guy, four days left in Shawwal, he sends me the text. But how many days of Shawwal left? The mother was only four. Eid, yeah, the Quran was going to go. Allah was going to pass them. Everybody. Don't be that way. Pass them now. And if you've got your Kawi here, if you've got your mate here, bounce off each other. Encourage you. Do it with me. You know, Masa on Thursday. Come here at my house. I'll take you out. Whatever it is, encourage one another. Why? If you encourage him, you get his days also.